It's gonna be a fun one and I know you're gonna enjoy it because today we're gonna be making a garden playpen kind of thing for a hamster. I'm not sure what I'm calling this. I'm sure I've figured something out by the time the video goes up, but right now, I haven't a clue. We're sprouting various seeds in a box. That's it, that's that's the long and short of it. Several months back, I bought myself a big old Samla bin from Ikea, which I've actually just pushed out of shot. That was silly. A big old Samla bin. I got it to be my new hospital slash quarantine cage and also so I can remake my bin cages DIY video. I'm gonna do bin cages 101 at some point. It will happen. But before I film that, because priorities, I had the brilliant idea of turning this thing into a little garden for my hamster to play in because, you know, his cage isn't gardeny enough as is. And I thought it'd be more interesting to share with you than just sprouting seeds in a pot. As I'm sure you can imagine, this is a very straightforward DIY. All you're gonna need is some cheap soil. It really doesn't matter what you use. Ideally go for something that doesn't have fertilizer in it because one, you don't need it. And two, it's just a little better for your hamster. You're also gonna need a great big plastic storage box, as mentioned. Again, it doesn't really matter exactly what kind of box you use as long as it has a lid and is big enough to actually be fun for your hamster to play in. And of course you're gonna need seeds as well. So we've got sunflower seeds, we've got flax seeds, we've got pumpkin seeds, and we've got flax and chia seeds, and in fact, we also have millet seeds. Millet is the easiest one to sprout. If you have no confidence in your ability to sprout seeds or garden at all, go for millet. Just go into the pet shop or into your local supermarket, into the bird aisle where they sell all the bird seed and grab a bag of bird millet. That's all you need. The other seeds I have come from the organic section of the supermarket and the sunflower seeds I've just picked out of my hamster mix. But again, you can just get this from the bird aisle of a pet shop or supermarket. Unsalted, of course. Don't, don't get salted sunflower seeds. I don't know why people ask that. Before you start, do make sure to give your plastic box a good clean round on the inside when they come straight from the shops. They have that really strong plasticky smell and you wanna kind of whoosh that out and leave it to air dry for a little bit. I did clean mine. Um, unfortunately, I've been keeping soil in it, which has holes in the bag, so there is a little bit of dirt in the bottom, but it was clean. <laughs> Last time I opened bags of soil on camera, I did it in a really weird kind of way where I did a cross cut and emptied it out. And that seemed to bother a lot of people. So I'm gonna do that again this time. Make as much mess as possible. Quick. My soil is not in the best condition because it was for a little bit being stored outside um, and it is very hot and very dry in my country. So this has, has just kind of dried out completely. <laughs> so, you know, it's not the best, which is why I'm not using it in my actual plants. But little seeds will sprout in here, no problem. It's not the end of the world. And while I'm here, I might as well point this out again. Lots and lots of soils have these little white bead ball thing looking stone pebbly stuff in them. It's perlite, it is, uh, a natural mineral, it's called a volcano glass or volcanic glass, I can never remember which. Uh, and it's perfectly harmless to your hamster, so if your soil has the little white pebbly balls in, do not worry. By the way, gardens like this can also be made for mice and even for rats. Ratity makes these for her rats and they look fantastic and her rats love them. And she's basically the entire inspiration behind this. So do make sure you go and watch her channel because it's great. What? It's just in chunks. Look at it, chunky soil. Da -da -da. I should have worn gloves doing this. Why do I never wear gloves? Why do I not think about gloves until it's too late to bother wearing gloves? <sighs> la 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 la. Whee. It's not therapeutic in the slightest. It's actually quite upsetting. My hands are covered in dry. I didn't like it. Do not want this feeling. But there we go, soil everywhere. I shouldn't squat like this, that is very unflattering. <laughs> and also incredibly uncomfortable. Now because my soil is in such a poor state right now, I'm actually gonna water it before I put the seeds in just to give it a minute to soak that in. And yes, there are no holes in this box, so this water is just gonna stay in here. Which means you have to be careful about not overwatering. This is an awful watering can. Not overwatering or you'll just end up with like a muddy swamp. I just 
gonna shush that round. Absorb my moisture. That's already feeling a lot better. The one last thing I wanna do before I shove the seeds in is to put in some driftwood. So I've washed this stuff off, it's nice and clean. Uh, there's no aspen or anything left over on it that would start to mold or rot, cause this stuff will be just fine in here. Uh, but you wanna be careful about not letting any aspen or wood shavings of any kind get into this, cause it will go moldy very quickly. So we're just gonna plonk in a few bits of driftwood in some faux artistic way. That'll work. Hmm. There we go. And now we can add the seeds and this bit, this is a real art behind this. You have to be very precise and very particular about the way you do this part, because if this goes wrong, um, I mean, the whole thing is basically scrapped if you don't do this bit properly. So pay very close attention to the next bit, because it's really important. You take your seeds, and you do that. You just fling them in there. <laughs> Random places, no one really cares. We'll call it art. We'll be pretentious about it. It's fine. Shove some sunflower seeds in there as well. And I know, they're sitting on top of the soil. We're not gonna put soil on top of these because I love it when you guys hate me. That's not true. I'm just too lazy to bother doing the double soil thing. And this still works. I've done this before. It works. So who really cares? <laughs> I mean, you can push the seeds into the soil if you want to. I'm gonna do this because otherwise I will upset some people if I don't plonk the seeds in. So there we go. Everyone's happy. The big seeds are being pushed under the soil. And now for the best seed of all, this is the one I'm gonna go crazy with. I'm gonna absolutely drown this box in millet because it's fantastic to watch it grow. It comes up just like grass and it looks beautiful. Yes. Mm. Millet everywhere. Da -da -da. And we're gonna turn that over again to make you happy. I'm sorry, I'm being far too sassy with you guys today. I have not been on camera for like over a month. It's been a long time. And, and um, I gotta figure out how to turn myself down again. Cause I've kind of forgotten. How are you supposed to do the professional on camera thing? I don't know. I've only been doing this for eight years. Why would I know what to do? All right, there we are. Everyone's in. Everyone is looking lovely. The soil off my hands. And then I'm just gonna water it one more time as well. Just to make sure everything's nice and wet. Make sure this top layer has enough moisture so everyone can grow. And that's all there really is. That's all you need to do. Your garden is done. You just now have to wait for it to grow and uh, try not to kill it, which isn't too hard. Please don't fail at this part. Maintaining this, super easy. First, you wanna put your lid back on because that's gonna help create a sort of a greenhouse effect in here. That's gonna help your seeds to grow quicker and sprout quicker. Uh, makes a huge difference doing this. Depending on your climate and the time of year you're doing this will depend on how often you need to water it. I water my seeds usually about once a day in the summer and then in the winter, maybe once every other day or every third day, but because it is still very hot right now, I will be watering this every single day. And you will wanna take the lid off the box for about 10, 15 minutes every single day just to let the air circulate. Uh, do it around the time you water it if you do water it daily and that'll just make it even more convenient. And then you just wait, you just wait and they'll start to sprout up within a few days and within uh, a week or so, you should have a pretty nice garden going already. It'll probably take about two, maybe three weeks, again, depending on your climate, for this to grow to a length where you can let your hamster play in it. Um, and before you do let your hamster play in it, just make sure the day before you want them to play in it, take the lid off and probably skip watering that day as well because you don't want them to be playing in sodden soil. It's okay if it's slightly damp, but you really don't want your hamster to be playing in really, really wet soaking soil. And for a bit of extra fun, you can even add some live insects in here on the day that you put your hamster in. I'll just scatter feed a few extra seeds because that way if they do get left, they will just continue growing as well. Um, and the garden should last for as long as you take care of it. Well, unless your hamster completely destroys it on the first day, in which case you have to, you know, redo the whole thing. Well, not redo the whole thing. You just have to throw some more seeds in there and start again. And if it doesn't grow, again, it's very easy to recover. You just throw some more seeds in, water it, 
start again. You don't have to do too much of it from scratch. I will be sure to film another video on this in a couple of weeks time once it's all grown and it's ready for nitrogen to use. I'll let you guys watch him playing around in that because that's always so cute and so fun to watch. But for now, this is all you need to know. Um, I hope you found this video helpful and useful and I hope you'll implement it in your own pet's lives because it's a great source of fun for them. It's a great source of stimulation. I've also just realized that my watering can, which is sitting right next to me, apparently has a hole in the bottom of it because my knees are very, very wet right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this opportunity to say goodbye. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. Check out the merch shop if you haven't already. It's a great way of supporting the channel. Plenty of cute designs in there. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>